What is up, everybody? This is Brent Brookhouse. I am on the call with Ethan Page. I didn't screw it up this week, so we're already off to a better start than last week. Uh, how's it going, man? Great. Uh, it, well, it gets better every week, the podcast, I think. So, I mean, it's normal that it's better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I've I've botched that intro a good three or four times. In, uh... Um, probably more. Thanks. Cool. Cool, cool. There we go. I think that I need to check. No, but, but realistically. Oh, yeah, for you sure. Because you oh, were yeah. screwing it up when this thing was still attached to Flow Slam. Yeah, speaking of Flow Slam, I was watching uh, last night's NXT, and there are so many WrestleMania weekend highlights of Ricochet in the video package that they're running now. And there's Actually? Like, yeah, so there's... Uh, like the flow slam banner all over wwe network so we finally made it no way <laughs> yeah it's pretty great why would they why would they use those clips i'm sure gabe's giving them clips so that they have you know stuff showing off ricochet on the indies uh oh is that what they're building it as yeah it's just uh you know stuff showing ricochet and like his whole thing is like struggles to get to where he's at right versus velveteen right. dream whose biggest struggle was being cut on tough enough i guess so uh okay now well, whatever it gives them something to sink their teeth into yeah so uh, flow slam banner all over wwe network which hilarious yeah that's great i'm glad that we finally made it to the big time and i uh i'm still very disappointed that i didn't get the banner when it shut down you actually wanted it? Oh, absolutely. To do what? I don't know. Something hang it in your stupid. garage? No, like, you know, bring it to an Alpha One show and just hang it in the background. Oh, I would 100% let you do that. <laughs> that would be so funny to me. I would be the only one laughing at that. I don't think so. A lot of people <laughs> have laughed at Flow Slam a lot over the year. The year. That's that's the good joke there is that it's over the year. Uh, speak- Man, that, they like came and oh, we are not allowed to talk about this legally, anyways. Oh, we can Let's talk. About, we can talk about it. I just can't talk about the inside business aspects. Oh, like all the money Gabe made and didn't use for the promotion. Well, I don't actually know anything about how much money he made. That's a lie. You told me. Yeah, it's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we're in so much trouble. <laughs> you're gonna get like uh we're the next punk and cabana yeah the that's a lie you told me probably doesn't help me at all <laughs> yeah no it doesn't help uh so let's talk about that okay so yeah cm well, punk you, colt you cabana. did not want to talk about this oh no no it's totally fine uh so cm punk colt cabana won their court case against uh dr what's his name i can't remember um But basically alleging that he had suffered, you know, great damages because of Punk's story on The Art of Wrestling. Um, And that just... And that's that. And Cabana essentially got pulled in to this just because he posted it. Right. Like how when Flow Sports sues me, they're going to pull you in because you're co-hosting. Well... Yeah, okay, sure. (laughs) But yeah, Yeah, I mean, essentially it was that Colt, you know, had the audio. He's the one that put the audio up. He owns the podcast, so, you know, that roped him in. And I mean, essentially, from everything that I've read, it boiled down to uh, Colt and Punk's lawyers were able to say, you've you're getting eight hours of sleep a night. You have lost no business. You've lost no friends. You've suffered no actual harm other than people teased you on Twitter and it ruined your Thanksgiving. And that seems like a good enough case that, that, that pretty much won it. That was the final, like, I know it, I know it came. I mean, that was stuff that was coming up throughout the trial. I mean, they did straight up ask like, you know, how much sleep are you getting a night? And he said eight hours and, you know, have you lost any business? Uh, You know, has, has your business financially suffered? And he 
had to say no. And then I think they used all that again in the closing argument. But I mean, essentially, if you're arguing for damages and it's done nothing to you mentally, it's done nothing to you financially, it's done nothing to you socially other than some people made fun of you online, uh, I don't think you can win a case like that. Yeah. I was very happy to see them them win. Cabana specifically. Because, like, he, like, he gave that interview, but he didn't force anyone to talk about anything, and then he gets pulled into this just for posting it. Right. And, I mean, yeah, and, and I, I, I have a lot I, of trouble imagining that Punk, like, maliciously came up with this story also. Like, if you wanted to make a, like, crazy story about shit that went wrong in WWE, I don't think you know, the doctor sucked at diagnosing a uh, staph infection is all that interesting. Yeah, right. I 100% agreed. So yeah, that happened, and now Punk can relax and get ready for his fight on Saturday. Yeah, what bad timing, eh? Yeah, that's the worst part, is timing-wise, like, it couldn't really have come at a worse time to distract him from you know, whatever focus he should have on this fight, which I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and guess that he'll win. Really? Yeah. Uh, Not that I'm like against it. Do as well as you want. I'm, I'm not a UFC person, but you really think he's going to win? I guess. I mean, it's like, Here's the thing. If he doesn't, he needs to never fight again. Like, he, he he's basically said that his focus is on fighting, and fighting's what he's going to continue to do after this Saturday. Which, I mean, to find his first opponent, they, you know, had the fight with the... Uh, oh my god, I can't believe I'm blanking. Um, who did he fight the first time? Um... Mickey Gall? Yeah. So they brought in Mike Jackson and Mickey Gall to be, like, inexperienced guys to fight. The winner got to fight Punk. And Gall trashed Jackson. And Jackson's, like, 0-2. He doesn't have much of a ground game. He's a, he's a good striker. So assuming that, you know, they've just been drilling, just take it to the ground, take it to the ground... You know, I don't think he had anywhere he could beat Mickey Gall, like standing or on the ground. But the ground is fairly safe against Jackson. And Mike's a good guy. I, I, he's he's a very nice, very nice guy. But I just uh, will you th- know him? Not no, no. But you know, through Twitter and MMA stuff from you know working in MMA for a while, and he's right, right. In, our, in our limited interactions has always been a very nice guy. But so like I feel like if I was picking completely with my head like you know if my house was on the line or my life was on the line I'd probably pick Jackson just based on you know a lengthier time fighting and experience and knowledge but I guess I'm picking more with my gut and taking Punk here I hope Punk wins just for the people that are like 100% against him yeah I mean I don't know I what I would like to have happen is for him to win and say all right that's good enough I'm done oh you think that no I it won't happen I just would like for that to be how it goes down because I don't think given his age and you know, when he started getting into this full time and everything, I don't think he can make the kind of strides to be competitive against anybody other than like this absolute lowest tier person that they can find. So, you know, I, I'd like it to just be if he wins, he hangs him up. If he loses, he hangs him up. This is it. But he's definitely not going back to wrestling if all the things he's said over the last 24 hours are true. Which are? Uh, I think the last one I heard was, I'm done with wrestling, I'm done with wrestling, I'm done with wrestling, I'm not coming back. 
that's like word for word what he said? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I would assume that he's done as well. And, I mean, yesterday he talked about how no one has made him an offer to come back. Like, people will say to him, hey, you know, if you come back or if you want to wrestle, let me know. But nobody says, like, hey, um, we'll pay you this amount of money to come back and have a match. I find it really hard to believe that the guys at All In weren't like, hey, we'll give you this amount of money. Yeah, I don't know. But he, yeah, after that, then today he gave another interview where he talked about because he said nobody made him an offer, then everybody just assumed that meant all somebody somebody had to do was make him an offer and he'd be in, but that he's absolutely done with wrestling. Oh. oh, okay then. Yeah. But like... By all he, means, be done with wrestling. Yeah, he uh, couldn't participate in the UFC workouts because of his anxiety. Oh, because of the... Uh, I would assume the trial, probably. Yeah. I mean, you're coming off the trial and then immediately having to get in the mindset of fighting again. And, like, no matter how confident or successful a person has been in their life, like the way that first fight went was so bad that that's got to haunt you a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Like you, you went into this thing super confident and ended up losing. Now you have to re not relive it, but like redo it. Right. And prove people wrong that you've been saying that you're going to do. So yeah, it's definitely, uh, I hope he does good. I hope he does good. Um, so that, uh, that Star Wars, or Star Wars, I'm still pissed off about Star Wars, so, uh, but that Spider-Man trailer, just the annoyance of the, uh, I guess the community or whatever, um, just with all the harassing of people that work in Star Wars because they don't like the direction of it. It's just oh, so you're not mad at the movies? You're mad at the fans, right? I haven't watched the last few movies. Oh, okay. Like I, ju- it's just one of those things that I would like to, but I haven't. Like for whatever reason, I just haven't either had the time or thought about it when I do have the time. So, but yeah, just the fact that every, like every year, a Star Wars movie comes out, and then people mostly assholes freak out about you know the cast and act shitty to people yeah Um, but yeah spider-man trailer uh what was what's the name uh into the spider-verse right dude it looks amazing yeah the art's gonna be in theaters yeah in theaters the art style is really uh really unique i guess um the only thing that kind of threw me off was like Peter Parker's voice didn't sound like I would expect Peter Parker's voice to sound. I love the actor that's playing him, though. I don't even know who it is. I like. I didn't look into it to that level. Oh, you gotta look him up. <clears throat> okay, let's see here. Oh, it's Jake Johnson. Okay. Yeah. It's Jake Johnson from New Girl. Yeah. Okay. Funny guy. Yeah, funny guy. I just... it. Boy, I can't believe I didn't realize that. No, the voice just threw me up, but, like, I don't care. It doesn't make it bad or anything. And, yeah, it looks really exciting. Uh, Spider-Gwen being in the trailer. Very exciting. Yeah, and they left that rate at the end. Um, I guess in a way of saying, like, hey, a bunch of stuff's going to happen. Yeah, do you know, is this part of, like, a bigger thing? I don't know. Uh, I'm hoping it does good so that they make more. uh, Because I really do enjoy um, animated movies, especially DC over... I'm sorry, Marvel over DC, so... Really? The animated stuff? No, like, character-wise. Oh, okay. I I would like them to continue to make more. Okay, is because what I'm saying. Yeah, because DC's animated stuff has been really good for the most part. Yeah, it's great. 
that's I think that's the best stuff that they do do. I said do do. <laughs> yeah, I, I I wouldn't argue with that. Um, yeah, so that that's exciting. Uh, the whole like it's just nice to uh, see them actually do something with Miles Morales in like a feature film capacity. That's cool. Well, yeah, that, this would be feature film, right? I mean, I guess I theatrical release, I guess, might be the more appropriate ter- term, but it's a feature length movie, so yeah. Okay, sweet. I'm excited. Yeah, uh, let's see. And what... going to be in theaters, which is crazy. Yeah, the, that part's uh, part's interesting. I'm assuming that has to do with the success of pretty much everything marvel right now well yeah i think i it's hard for me to believe there'd be anything that you wouldn't want in theaters if it's marvel right now and Mm, yeah okay i mean like there's it's a legit cast i mean we have shrivers like it it's a big cast so yeah i don't know i mean there's still some of the I guess the standard animated stuff, I guess they still wouldn't put out in theaters, but anything you can find an excuse to put out in theaters, I don't know why they wouldn't. Yeah, right now, I agree. So what else is going on? Let, let's uh, let's catch up on what you've been doing and what you are doing. Oh, you know, just uh, being a pro wrestler, living that glorious dream. Um, I got big show tomorrow morning flying out to knoxville tennessee for bandit pro and then uh saturday i am in the prestigious or one time prestigious previously prestigious uh iwc super indie tournament i I, this is my second time being in it too and uh i'm pretty excited not gonna lie and who are you matched up with our first round? Joey Janela. That's right. I knew it was somebody of note. So it should be interesting. Probably going to get hurt. <laughs> Why are you saying you're probably going to get hurt? Because he does crazy moves. He's a I... crazy move guy. Yeah, but you're also guy who says I'm not taking your crazy moves. That is correct. So, so we will see what happens <laughs> now won't we uh, I, I suppose we will uh, and let's see you have wrestled Janela one on one before yes in Alpha, in Alpha one, 1 in yeah. our tournament and he beat me yes he did mm. <laughs> good for him Boy, that is that is some cool music you've got in the background. Oh, that's my uh, laundry machine telling me that my laundry is ready. Because cool. i got to pack my bag for tomorrow, <laughs> which is what we were talking about. So we got a lot of stuff that came in on Twitter. Okay, uh, sick. And one of the things that came in was like uh, almost a week ago, uh, at Pocket Volcano was listening to us talk about fan ownership of wrestling storylines and said on the last uh, Bitter Boys Club you briefly mentioned fan ownership of wrestling a worse instance of that is fan ownership of wrestlers for instance giving them shit wh- for where they choose to wrestle or sign imagine thinking you should be able to dictate if a wrestler signs with WWE I'll, w- I'll never watch them again they're going to be misused that mentality is so warped but I see it constantly it's gross okay Thoughts on that? Um, I think it's natural because in their eyes they feel as if though um, they are contributing to our careers by supporting us whether it's like financially or emotionally or whatever uh, I've had fans literally email me saying things like, um, <clears throat> oh, man, you're getting lazy. They've emailed you and said you're getting lazy? Yeah. They're like, oh, man, you're getting lazy. Or, oh, man, you're getting fat. Maybe you should fix that. And, like, 
is it in it's a good natured probably do i ever want to open an email like that no yeah i don't like yeah that's just that's mean <laughs> it's really, like i can't imagine the mentality of oh god i gotta let him know he looks fat yeah it's just super bizarre and like I, like it, I have enough confidence, it doesn't bother me at all. It's just I just the thought of someone having the argument with themselves: is this going to be a good idea? And them saying yes is mind blowing to me. Yeah, and I mean, like you were starting to say, I get it to an extent, being like disappointed if someone that you like signs with say wwe because it you know you're going to lose certain aspects of you know their matches and you know things are run a lot differently and you're not going to see like for example joey janela versus ethan page on the indies is going to look a lot different than it would in wwe so i can see sure yeah I can see being like, oh, I'm a little disappointed because I like watching this style. But when people are like, I'm not going to watch them anymore because they made a bad decision. like, And that wrestler is going, yeah, I don't care. <laughs> okay. Right. Like, obviously it's a decision made based on a wide variety of considerations like yeah like changing your lifestyle right changing your lifestyle yeah it might be you know we've talked about before that there are it it's not unusual at all for top indie guys to make more money in a week on the indies than they would in wwe but that guarantee isn't there week to week for sure so and that's not a lot of people, right? Yeah. It, it's not a lot of people, but even those people still have the consideration of, you know, what is the stability financially worth it or is giving up control of my schedule? Is that worth it? Like there's so many things that go into that decision. And I don't think anybody just rushes into just saying, Oh yeah. Like, if you if you immediately accept an offer like that it's because that is already in your head as what you're going to do like yeah. you're, you want the WWE deal and when it comes your way you're just going to take it and you know because that's your goal but it might not be like somebody in your case and I can't speak for you might be like a, you know I'm comfortable with what I'm doing now I don't want to spend more time away from my family even if financially it might be more beneficial so you know it's just it's a weird thing it's an understandable thing to be to want wrestlers you like to do things that you like it's not as understandable for me to assume that you know their motivations or that they give the remotest shit that you're throwing a fit on social media that they chose to do something you wish they hadn't. Right. It's, oh man, imagine going in to a freaking McDonald's and being like, oh my God, the fry cook is the manager, well, but he makes the best fries. He's going to make the fries for me now. Like, well, no, that, that guy has three kids and he needs to feed them, so shut your mouth. But right. we it, don't have that because this is professional wrestling. Well, yeah, it's, I mean, it goes, you know, in a weird twist because I can't remember exactly who said it, but it goes like so many different directions in terms of that interaction and that respect and everything like Fans shouldn't be shitty to wrestlers because it you just shouldn't be shitty to people. Hey, right. Wrestlers Agreed. being people, no need to be shitty to them. But you you then see kind of the weird inverse thing where if somebody makes a 
mild comment, like not shitting on a wrestler, but you know, says something like, "Oh, just watched, you know, guy A versus guy B match, kind of sucked." And then you see somebody like, "Oh, if you've never wrestled, you don't get to talk." Okay, yeah, I that, disagree with that. That logic bums me out too because it's like, you know, anybody that says something like that has critiqued things that they haven't done. They've seen a movie that they thought sucked. Yeah, uh, they've eaten they, food they thought sucked. Right. You know, they've heard songs that they think are terrible, whatever. Like, that logic sucks. But then, getting back to the fan fan treatment of wrestlers, you can do that without tagging the wrestlers in the tweet saying you thought their match sucked. Oh, it don't matter. We'll find it. Well, yeah, if you're, you know... Okay, what percentage of wrestlers are vanity all searching to your the same degree as you as all of them? But the same degree, no, because I'm I'm assuming people don't want to admit the fact that they do it, but everybody does it. Do you have an alert set up? Like just no. Like, okay, so it's you don't have like. My, yeah, no, no. Okay, it's I, just in my search. Right, I assumed you had like a tweet deck column that was just you know, updating constantly with any, uh, any, I wouldn't even know how to do that. I'm not even that good at Twitter. Oh man. I'll have to give you the tutorial. Oh, please. This might help me waste more time in my day. (laughs) So it, so most wrestlers are vanity searching a good amount of the time. I would bet lots of money that yes, they are. I'm trying to vanity search for you right now, and I'm just getting... You've been very active on Twitter over the past couple hours. Yeah. (laughs) I have been lately. I've been enjoying Twitter. Also, you put out the the available Hmm. dates. Yeah. Oh, you want to talk about this? Yeah, let's talk about it. People shit on this all the time, and it drives me nuts, because it has legitimately helped me put money in my pocket and food on my table. Yeah. I mean, it, there's so many different ways that I could see it saving time or putting you in contact with the right people. I mean, you don't have to search for every promotion in across the United States and Canada. That's running a date and then contact, like you put out the dates, people let you know if their shows and, Either they can, a promoter can reach out directly to you, or you see that there's a show in an area that makes sense, and you can contact them and see if they've got any interest in booking, right? Exactly. I got two shows today just off of that post. Yeah, because this is... I feel like we talk about Jordan Grace's Twitter way too much, but um, it was a week or two ago she had put out just a screenshot of like weird shit that some guy had DM to her and uh, Brian Pillman Jr. was like, Oh, well close your DMS. And she was like, no, I get too many bookings through Twitter. And there, and he was like, Oh, there's more professional ways to be contacted than Twitter. It's like, why, why close a door that brings in money? Yeah. Like, See, I have mine closed. Uh, Cause I don't want like, my faithful husband so i don't want my wife to ever think that anything's happening if like i get some random girl sends me a picture of her tits or something which i'm not interested in please don't do that uh so th- i just keep that close because the am- i have way more people that follow me on twitter than i do like instagram or anything like that but yeah well yeah and there's weird things that can happen like the other day uh Christy was using my phone. I had her looking at something and a Twitter thing that said, love you, babe popped up. It was from Mikey from black label pro because we were just bullshitting about something. I think you were in that, but it was like immediately like, Oh fuck. No, Nope. That is not what you think. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So yeah, it's not hard to imagine that happening, but at the same time, like, yeah, if you don't need them open, but if somebody wants their DMs open or wants to use Twitter to solicit bookings or, you know, whatever method it is, if it's bringing you 
bookings, it's making you money, it's making your life and career easier, then, you know, who cares? Yeah, that's my thought. I, I have no care for anyone telling me how to do my business because I'm, I'm going to do what's best for me. So, Right. And who who is it you get shit from for that? Is it like is uh, it wrestlers I, I, or I don't get any personally, but uh, I have been seeing like tweets and stuff like that regarding it, and I'm like, I'm never like tagged to them or anything, but I see them. Yeah, I mean, I I guess I've seen them too. Like, and it's not like you have no shortage of bookings. I mean, you're about as active as anybody, uh, anybody that I see. So it's not like you're doing it out of some weird desperation. And right. It's not... Like if I like, no, I don't need it. I want it. Right. There's and it's also not yeah. like if you really want to fill those dates, you're not going to post one tweet and then be like, all right, well, if nobody gets back to me, then that's it. Yep. Exactly. So yeah, picked up two bookings already. You got what five spots left open then, six, something like that. Yeah, and and like these are on weekends where I already have two shows, so it's it's so easy to tell someone yeah, you're splitting travel between two other promotions. So yeah. Alright. Uh let's see, what what's some of the other stuff that came in? That was so long ago I have to scroll for a while here. I'm so very popular on Twitter. I see that. <laughs> Speaking uh, of popularity, I wanted to thank uh, all the fans who <laughs> signed up for my nerd Instagram. Uh, let me actually give a couple shout outs because it means a lot to me because it's super 50, nerdy. 54 followers now. Um, so this is for sure people that were listening to the podcast if i miss people i'm very sorry it's not on purpose uh two heels in a face um david kincannon heels and marks henry t casey holden albright uh josh g these are all people listening to the podcast uh coco mo cycle there you go chris lamax Thanks. Appreciate it. Keep following. I'm, uh, I'm going to put up as many cool pictures as I can. Oh, Matthew Duggan, another one as well. Oh, these aren't in order at all. How did, this does not work great. But anyways. So looking at this, you're not a uh, don't take them out of the box guy, right? No. So I am a don't take them out of the box guy. Um these are all things that I took out of the box before I became a don't take them out of the box guy. So yeah. All right. Yeah. Cause I was, I was going to say that was the one thing about it that surprised me. It was just the, uh, no, no, I, I, I don't. Um, so the friend of mine, Steve Brown, uh, he takes them out of the box. So anything that I'll shoot in the next couple months will probably be his, that I'm photoshopping. All right. Yeah. He, he's the he's the crazy man that takes them out of the box. I can't do that. It gives me a heart attack. I think we've asked this before, but it comes in once every couple weeks. But are there Marvel Legends figures that you are still looking for? Oh my god! Yeah. Um. Lots. Uh, especially now, like I feel like. Uh, the popularity for Marvel Legends have gone up insanely in the last year. Uh, they have more like waves of figures coming out more frequently than ever before, and uh, there's a bunch of like exclusives to mostly Walgreens and Walmart and Toys R Us, uh, and there's tons of stuff that I'm still looking for. Most of it's older, like I'm looking for the Ghost Rider from many 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 moons ago and it's very very hard to find and i'll probably never get my hands on it uh right now the one i'm hunting is mysterio from spider-man it's another very hard to find uh but yeah so other than those 
I'm kind of just waiting for things to come out at this point because I've caught up on the Deadpool stuff that just came out with the movie and uh, I caught up on the Avengers and then they're going to have more Avengers stuff coming out soon. All right. It's pretty out of control. Like I'm staring at this wall and I've made better choices in my life. (laughs) (laughs) Looks like Mysterio is 53 bucks on Amazon. So like I've I've only stooped that low once, um, and it was for an Agent Venom action figure, which never actually came out uh, in like stores. It never made the pegs. It was like a exclusive. I don't know where, but I had to order that one online, and I think I paid upwards of fifty dollars for it. All right, so you do have a a, a reasonable cutoff. Oh yeah, no, I'm not. And I'm not a full price guy. If I see it full price, unless it's like something that's extremely hard to find, like if I saw that Mysterio, I would probably just grab that right away. But if uh, if it's like something that I think I can find later at a discount, I will definitely do that. All right. Um, we talked about him earlier, Mikey from Black Label Pro. Uh, yeah. Asked, well, asked what guy. the what the first CD you ever bought with your own money is. I, I want to think it was a uh, big shiny tunes. Was that a thing in, uh, in America? Uh, if it was, I don't know it. Look it up. I'm looking at it right now. It's a series of rock albums com- compiled and released by CMT st- or con- Canadian music television station. Much music. Oh, there you go. So no, it's not American at all. <laughs> yeah, so that would be the first uh, CD. I'm I'm guessing. I don't actually know. Well, it is the best-selling album series in Canadian history. Yeah, there you go. So that makes sense. That's when I found out I knew uh, I liked Three Doors Down. Okay. Mine was definitely uh, Def Leppard Hysteria. Yeah, I saw you post the picture. <laughs> that was... How do you remember that though? Like, like what actually gives you the memory of that? Like, I have memories. The first cassettes I've ever got, but they were as gifts, and it was uh, Aqua and uh, it was I got Aqua and my sister got Spice Girls. So I got the shit end of both sticks. Well, I got a. CD player for God, I think it was my birthday, and my birthday's in February, and I remember like I had gotten into music because I thought my aunt was really cool and she was into you know all the eighties like hair metal shit, so I really wanted a CD player. They got it for me, and the first couple things I got. I know they had bought for me and then I started like saving up allowance to buy like to buy my own music and I just remember it was a big deal that I had to be taken to the store to get Def Leppard Hysteria because of Pour Some Sugar on Me that was it's a great a, song it was a very important uh, important song to God what was that that was 87 so yeah, I think I was like four or five when I made them take me to the the store to buy a CD. But yeah, it was it was such a big deal at the time that yeah, I, I definitely remember that. Yeah, I remember my uncle getting me Jay Z CD uh, when I was like way too young and should not have been listening to it uh, for Christmas. But other than that, nothing, no memory. Sorry, that might not have even been my first CD. I'm not making that promise to you. You know, uh, when you were going through the list of new follows on the Instagram, I think you said David Kincannon, right? Sure. I'm pretty sure you did. And just to be clear, that is the guy that finally did the Photoshop for our our casting of Infinity War. Yeah. Yeah. And he wanted us to cast some, uh, some other people, right? So you yep. could finish it. It was Wong, Nebula, Shuri, and... Oh, God, where is it? 
my Twitter just crashed and now it doesn't want to open. But yeah, so that was at least the start. I think it was like four or five people because yeah, they're let's... and it's because they're on the poster. Right, right. So, so let's there's do it. there's just some non photoshopped people hanging out on his poster. Yeah, and Batista because we chose him. Yeah. I the only thing I uh I think he should have done is photoshopped a different picture of Batista onto Batista. Imagine like doing that work. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a for... jerk just for requesting that. Oh, whoa. Okay. Um hang on. This is, as of a couple minutes ago, breaking. CM Punk has been pulled from his scheduled bout this weekend at UFC 225 by the Illinois Athletic Commission. Why? Uh, he, uh, he was shitting himself, pretty much. Medical staff mentioned symptoms of incontinence. What does that mean? Uh, like, can't control your shit. Incontinence is can't control your oh, shit? Oh my god, I just fell for the fucking stupid shit. I'm gonna is edit it the this. The onion? What? Was it the onion? No, it's this motherfucker that changes his Twitter like name to Ariel Helwani and uses his icon too so that it pops up on your feed. Like So some... why do you follow him? I don't. Somebody like retweeted it and it popped up in my feed and I just saw Ariel saw his picture. So now I want to like edit that out of the podcast, not because I'm embarrassed, but because I, I'm pissed that this guy got the reaction he wanted no give it to him he deserves it well i should have known when i like reading the tweet i didn't read the incontinence part and then it's like that seems weird but okay well people pull from fights all the time it's not like you're like being told something that's absolutely impossible right but god that's people on twitter suck yeah man someone ruined avengers for me piece of shit Ah, yeah, I forgot that happened. That's brutal. Yeah, man. Sucked the soul out of me. And it Not ruined the Avengers stone. for you. No, it didn't ruin it. It's still <laughs> the best movie I've ever seen, but... Uh, yeah, man. Real pissed about that. But yeah, I, well, good for that guy. He's funny. Alright, Wong. Um, I don't know. Do we go for, like full-on racist and just... Fuck picked an Asian wrestler <laughs> I mean it's kind of oh, an issue Key Katara with no mask on <laughs> for sure he looks exactly like him <laughs> yeah see that was full racist <laughs> but I mean it's more of an issue when you have an Asian character and you cast him with a non-Asian actor so oh like that ghost shell or whatever that movie was yeah ghost in the shell like yeah or ghost yeah whatever it was but yeah, you got to Yeah, I guess so. I guess that's correct. Uh, okay, so let's do that. Keep guitar with no mask. Unless you know someone better. But I'm all for it. No, I mean, that, that works. Uh, Nebula. How did we not do that? I don't know, but I mean, I went back and listened and there was no... We just missed her. Oh, you did go back and listen. Okay. Um... Nebula, Nebula, Nebula. I don't know. What are you thinking? Give me someone. I'm thinking. Hang on. Huh? Let's see. No, I hear you clicking. You're not thinking. Cheater. Well, no, I'm pulling up. Oh, who we've already got? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's a it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of not their actual face. So, what do you mean? I mean, we're uh, you know we're looking at you know makeup, prosthetics, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Oh, so it's not really, yeah. right. It's not like we have to have quite the same amount of like they look the part 
Okay, so who's gonna play a robotic female? Robotic female. God damn. I'm trying to think of anybody that would be an interesting pick here. Might have to circle back here, well, I think. Okay, sure. Uh, Shuri. Uh, okay, so we need a uh, black female. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Trying to, trying to go through the list here. Oh, you got a list of black female wrestlers? Well, uh, the mental list of who that could be. Like, there's, uh, there's Ariel Monroe. Okay. But I don't want to seem like the first black indie wrestler I thought of is. <laughs> But God, I feel real weird about like just overall not knowing. Um, yeah, but we could get like Mia Yim to do it too. Yeah, that's true. Like it doesn't have to be dark as night, you know? Yeah. Think through this here. God, this is not good. Uh, not good radio. No, it's awful. <laughs> I'm. I do not usually edit anything down, but I will probably edit this down. <laughs> <laughs> Just because it's not not good. Listen. No. This is, uh, I don't know what you're doing. You're just clicking around. Give me some options here. You're not throwing out the options here either. What the hell? I gave you one. Are we not, you're not, uh, you're not into, you're not feeling me am? No, I mean, that, that works fine. Uh, yeah, we can do that. Well, let's put it down as an option. All right. Type away. Who else do we have to cast? Uh, I think that only leaves Nebula and Okoye. Wait, who's Nikoye? Which one's that? The bald one? Yes. Yeah. Huh, okay. Man, yeah, this is awful. Jesus, I, I boy, this is gonna be the first time that I do actually. Yo, who edit. who is Booker T's wife? Charmel. Let's do that. Okay, why are you going with Charmel? No, let's do Charmel for the last one because they have like kind of the same hair. All right, that works. And then Whatever. we'll do Mia Yim for the bald one. That, okay, that kicks ass. All right, so there's that. Yeah, what podcast talks about Charmel? Huh? I don't know. I'd imagine a lot of them. Think so? Probably. I don't know. I think that's uh, out of the woodwork. <laughs> Far left here, left field, out of nowhere. Charmel. I. Uh... Let's see, we got... Um, I want that in the description of the podcast. All right, Charmel will be in the description of the podcast. Boys talk about many things, including Charmel. <laughs> we also got the uh, the Disney World um, topic oh suggestion. God. Please. So, I'll talk uh, about this. Oh, you just got me so excited. <laughs> so, Tom... Uh, oh, I'm at, rubbing my nipples right now. At Not That Tom Green, uh, and also the guy behind the Dynamite Cup. Uh, 
said when we asked about topics um so disney world is cool huh and is it oh disney world is the is the absolute best yeah it's the coolest place in the world here's my reverence for disney world is i swear throughout this entire podcast pretty pretty often I just stopped myself from dropping an F-bomb in relation to Disney World because that's not a place that you swear about. No, it's not. I'm so <laughs> glad that you respect it enough to yeah. not swear. I mean... I, I respect. Respect, bro. It's been... It was last year at this time. Uh, we were, I think, on our way to Disney World, which was my daughter's first time i've talked about it before on here but it was like the best thing to be able to take her for her first experience and as much as i am looking forward to taking her for her second experience it's still kind of a like man it's never going to be as cool as it was the first time but now we had another baby so i get to do it again yeah exactly dude you're so lucky like Oh man, I my kid. I just wanted to grow up so we can go. <laughs> <laughs> Hurry up! I want to take you. And it's like she was four at the time, and I thought like maybe that was going to be like a year too young to really enjoy stuff. Outside of the fact that she's really short, and like that meant she couldn't go on a few things that normally she would have been able to. Outside of that, man, she loved everything. Even Dude, stuff you that, might like... you might think I'm crazy, but my wife and I were looking into what it would be like to bring a newborn. Ah, they're they're free up until three. Yes, they're free up until three, and there are so many rides you can actually bring the babies on, and they have a uh, a line program where you're you can have one person in line. And as soon as that one parent comes to relieve duties of the other, you switch and go right to the front. Yeah, so that's the rider switch, which is absolutely necessary uh, if you are taking a small kid. Um, there's the rider switch. There is, you know, you got to work the fast pass. You got to work that system. Oh, yeah. You know, make sure you have the app, book your fast passes like months in advance to get on the, the hard to three get months. on stuff. Yep. It's three months book the hard to get on stuff book your fast pass and then the second that you use those three or five or however many it is now i think it's three as soon as you get through them like the second you check in at the last ride when you're standing in line like book your next fast pass on the phone yep and you can right stay, away yeah you can stay pretty far ahead of wait, the game wait, that wait, way. wait 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 actually you can't do that can't do what you can't book it on your phone after you can book your first three on your phone nope in advance yes i just did this last year so wait so hold on so you did your three and then you have to finish all three before you book another one right exactly but the second on that third one the second that you like do the uh the magic band to check in the second you've checked in you can book your your next one after you've used your third. Oh. So you don't have to finish the ride and then and then book it, but the second you check in on the third one, you can book your next one. Did not know that. Also, uh dining reservations make those in advance. Oh, like now. Right. If you want to go next year. Yeah, I think it's... I can't remember how far in advance. It might be like six months with dining. Oh, you could do a full year. Can you? That's good. Dude, if you, if you want to go to be our guest... <laughs> good luck. Yeah, because we got... I know the... Uh, oh, God. Oh, it was be our guest. Yeah, we ended up... I... The joys of working from home... Uh sat for because we kind of decided last minute to go like it was like maybe i think two months in advance we decided to go and go in june and despite going during like the height of tourist season or you know right around uh we never waited in a line for more than 15 minutes 
we ate at Be Our Guest twice. Once for breakfast, once for dinner. Oh my god. Just by me working from home and sitting there and every couple minutes just checking to see if somebody had canceled a Be Our Guest reservation because my daughter really wanted to go. So I just kept... That is the ultimate dad move. Yeah, so I just kept checking every five minutes for like two, three weeks. And once I got the dinner one, I was like, oh, cool, we're good. And then we decided to move like to switch which park we were going to or something during one of the days so i just checked for breakfast reservations and there just happened to be a breakfast opening there too so got that one epic i'm so jealous my wife is so jealous i feel like we could just turn this into a disney world podcast i would be okay with that because did you um there's a bunch of stuff going on right now they're opening three marvel parks one of them is going to be in la the other one is Paris, and I think the other one is in Japan or China. Okay. Um, so they have that going on. Plus, they're working on uh, the Pixar Land for Florida. Right. So that'll be massive. Oh, man. The thing, the thing that made me the happiest, though, was when I was in Japan, in Disney, they still had the Roger Rabbit ride. Oh, wow. And okay. Toontown, yeah. Yeah, because there's, I mean, definitely a lot of stuff changes, and and it'll, like, catch you a little off guard if you're not ready. Oh, for sure. Like, uh, I'm dying to ride the Guardians of the Galaxy ride. I still haven't. And uh, people were pissed when they put that in because they had to take out Tower of Terror. Yeah, but, you know, just being comic nerds, I think we're both okay with the uh, the decision. I'm for sure okay with it because other parks have Tower of Terror and will probably keep it. Um, But as like a Disney head, then I kind of love it. Like that ride because it's one of the classics. Yeah. Yeah, there's a... God, I seriously could do like hours and hours of podcasting about Disney World and like tips and tricks because I'm very good at it. Well, I'll let you book our next one then. <laughs> See, that's that's what I'm thinking is we switch to a uh, Disney podcast and then we get to go, you know, way more often because we can claim that it's like a work trip. Yeah, are we paying for it though? <laughs> um maybe, <laughs> maybe not. This will this will be the only crowdfunding GoFundMe thing I ever do. <laughs> okay. That seems like a yeah, we get the GoFundMe going and just promise a uh, like a daily recap podcast of the uh, the trip. Yeah, <laughs> uh, dude, that would that would be life. That would be living for me. Like that's <laughs> that sounds unreal. All right, well we're at the fifty eight minute mark, so why don't you go ahead and plug your shit and we'll get out of here. Oh uh, yeah, sure. Uh, so prowrestlingtees dot com slash Ethan Page. Uh, follow me on Twitter at official ego. Follow me on Instagram at official underscore ego. And uh, yeah. Oh, follow my nerd Instagram, which is multiverse legends. And I post pictures of toys. So if you like action figures, then that's great. Also, you definitely run a wrestling promotion. And I think there's a way that I could watch shows. You can, and not to do anything spoilery, but that thing we talked about last week, very much in the works right now. Good deal. So you will be watching more recent things um, more frequently, which is good. Uh, so go to powerbomb.tv, use promo code ALPHA1, A-L-P-H-A, and the number one, and uh, you get 20 days for free. And even after the 20 days, trust me, it's worth it to stick around. Uh, especially in the coming days months probably weeks <laughs> absolutely and i am at brent brookhouse on twitter if you're listening make sure that you if you're listening then obviously you're going to hear this if you're not i don't know uh but make sure to rate and review us on itunes stitcher wherever you listen to the show you can follow my writing at cagesideseats.com they are the good people who make this podcast possible and we also have a Facebook page, which I've been bad at updating over the last week, so you should still follow it, and I'll, I'll update more. 
But uh, outside of that, that's it. That's the week. Uh, good luck um, not getting dropped on your head by Joey Janela. Boom. I'll do my best. Hey, hey.